Shalom. Call Laimla Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem or Kankadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, the Lord's mercy on Israel. So I'm going to read this chapter here and go briefly into it. And then I want to talk about how it connects to the end of days prophecies as well in the book of Revelation. This is Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So these are Israelite foreigners being joined unto the house of David, the new governorship. When we look at this word, strangers, it comes from the Hebrew, gar. <clears throat> A guess. So these were Israelites that were dwelling outside of the Holy Land. <clears throat> let's go here <clears throat> to the book. Of, let's go to verse 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. So the Lord is having mercy on his people, but the other nations are being subdued and subject under the new governor, the new governorship, which is the men of the house of David. So the Lord has not changed. And these are the other nations that are going to be taken in the captivity, which lines up with Jeremiah 30 and 16. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. So the Israelites are serving every nation under heaven. So these other nations are going to serve those that they have subdued underneath them, the Israelites, and traded as commodity slaves. Let's go to verse 4. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, and say, How have the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. So that king of Babylon is the ruler or the prince of the power of this world, which is Esau, Edom. Let's go here. I think it's John 12 and John 14. Yep. Book of John, chapter 12, verse 31. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. So Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So we read the Lord is going to have mercy on Jacob and yet choose Israel. And there's a lot of scoffers that say that Yahweh Shai never spoke out against the Edomites or the Romans. Yes, he did. 
And this is one example right here, or at least two examples. See, in John 16 and 11, no, let's go to John 14 and 30. <clears throat> in the red letter, John 14, let's go to verse 29. <clears throat> and now have I told you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. So the prince of this world have nothing in me. So the Edomites, they don't have any part in salvation. But they're going to be judged and trodden down. Rome, Edom, in which we're under the revised Roman Empire or the second leg of the revised Roman Empire. So we're in the feet and toes of the last ruling empire. Let's go back. So that king of Babylon is Esau Edom. And the top of that pyramid are the Luciferians, Amalek, the illuminated ones, or the so-called Illuminati, these international bankers. Isaiah 14 and 4 that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How had the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? The Lord have broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. So this golden city, <clears throat> let's go here, is America. Let's go to Oph Ophir. Oh, fear. I want to get a good example in here. Right here. Let's go to Second Chronicles 8. Second Chronicles 8. Verse 18. It says, In Haram, sent him by the hands of his servants, ships, and servants that had knowledge of the sea. And they went with the servants of Solomon to Ophir and took thence 450 talents of gold and brought them to King Solomon. So during King Solomon's reign, the seafaring ships were coming over to the Americas. And there's a reason that America was known for the, the 1949 gold rush. And there were several gold rushes here in America, not just the 1949 one. Let's go to Second Chronicles 9 and 10. And the servants also of Huram and the servants of Solomon, which brought gold from Ophir, brought algum trees and precious stones. Let's look at this word, Ophir. <clears throat> and it says... The name of Sun Yoktan and of Go region in the east of Fear. Let's go here. I think it's First Kings. Ten and twenty two, maybe. <clears throat> 
yeah, this is where I wanted to go. King Solomon's reign. All right, we're going to go to 1 Kings 10 and 21. And all of King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. It was nothing accounted of in the days of Solomon. So Solomon, it was nothing for him to toss a, a golden plate if a fly landed on it. That's how plentiful gold was during his reign. For the king had a sea, for the king had at sea a navy of Tarshish with the navy of Hiram. Once in three years came the navy of Tarshish bringing gold and silver, ivory, and apes, and peacocks. So it would take one and a half years to go over to Arsariff, another land, and another year and a half to come back. So he was sending ships to the Americas. These peacocks, when you look it up, it's not peacocks, it's turkeys. <clears throat> which was taking place in the Americas. Comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 8500. Tuckyim. Tuckyim. And second entry. Tukiyim. Tukiyim. And third entry. Tukiyim. Tukiyim. imported creatures so these are turkeys in in the english it's not the what we would think as a peacock but these are turkeys that were being taken over from the americas and gad would introduce some of these creatures as well to the edomites that came over to the west <clears throat> And would also show the Edomites how to, how to hunt, farm, and how to survive in the frontier of the Americas. 1 Kings 10 and 24. And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. And they brought every man his present, vessels of silver, and vessels of gold, and garments, and armor, and spices, horses, and mules, a rate year by year. So this golden city is the Americas, or the daughter of Babylon. <clears throat> Let's go back to Isaiah 14, verse 4 that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how have the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased. So America became rich, being used as a military arm to take down other nations and their militaries, to go after their resources and to set up international trade. So the elites used the daughter of Babylon as a military arm or their hammer to help put these nations down and subjugate them underneath this global system, the international currency, in which the dominant universal or global currency for a long time has been the U.S. petrodollar. So it used America to help establish that. <clears throat> Let's get ready to close out here. I'm going to close out in Revelation 18. Babylon is fallen. And every time I read this, it's absolutely amazing because the Most High has already seen the end from the beginning. So it's saying fallen in the past tense. So this is like a movie 
motion picture movie, several snapshots into the future. <clears throat> Revelation 18 and 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hole of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So this place is going to become a memorial for unclean creatures, a desert wasteland, as a reminder as to how not to live, where wickedness leads to corruption, abominations, idolatry, witchcraft, fornication, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So we read in Isaiah 14 and 4, the, how the golden city ceased. So we can see a connection here of what what Isaiah 14 is talking about. The golden city, the daughter of Babylon. So she waxed rich through using her military force to subjugate these nations to buy, sell, and trade based on the U.S. petrodollar, which became the dominant world currency. Now it's lost about 40% of its purchase power. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. The Lord is literally going to say, Come up hither, where the elect is going to be gathered out of the destruction. And the Bible says that the elect shall scarcely be saved. But right now, repentance starts that spiritual detachment from this place. <clears throat> For her sins have reached unto heaven and God have remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works. And the cup which she had filled, filled to her double. So she enslaved the Lord's people for over 500 years. So her enslavement of what's left of her is, is going to go into captivity. Those that were joined unto her, the international elite in their underground doomsday bunkers are gonna become the first fruits of slavery. <clears throat> so many of them and her bases are scattered throughout the world over 800 military bases. So the daughter of Babylon, Basra, is the headquarters, if you will, of the military wing. But she has outreach across the world, U.S. embassies and military bases, attaches and liaisons, so forth and so on. So a thousand years of captivity is what's going to be executed upon those that are joined unto her, which is really the residue of the Edomites, the international bankers, the first fruits of slavery. Reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her 
double according to her works. In the cup which she had filled, filled to her double. How much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. This lines up with the last five or so scriptures of Baruch chapter 4. <clears throat> Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Let's go ahead and get that in Baruch. So it lines up perfectly. So the Apocrypha is definitely a part of the Bible. See, it's right here. Baruch 4. Let's go to verse. Notice I mentioned that departing from her starts with repentance, returning unto the Lord. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto God, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. For as it was your mind to go astray from God, so be in return, seek him ten times more. So that's diligently meditating on the word daily. <clears throat> Let's keep going right here. For he that have brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. The Lord will have mercy on Jacob and yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. So the scriptures tie together that we read in Isaiah chapter 14. Take a good heart, O Jerusalem, for he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoice at thy fall. Miserable are the cities which thy children serve. Miserable is she that received thy sons. Daughter Babylon received the sons of Jacob. Starting with the northern kingdom around 722 B.C., followed by the southern kingdom, for as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. Nuclear fire is going to be her desolation. For I will take away the rejoicing, for I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude, and her pride shall be turned into mourning. There's even a song, I'm proud to be an American. And when you look at the book of Psalms, chapter 23, yea, though I walk through the valley, that word valley in the Hebrew translates into lofty or lifted up, haughty. So the valley of the shadow of death is the daughter of Babylon, America. For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitudes, and her pride shall be turned into mourning. For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting, long to endure, and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. Unclean creatures that we read about in Revelation 18. See? Babylon has become a habitation of devils. So this place is going to become a memorial or a reminder as to how not to live. O Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east, and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from God. Salvation, Shai, that's coming to deliver his people. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. They come gathered together from the east to the west by the word 
of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of God. So Yahweh Shai is going to return the Israelites back to the Holy Land, not the Balfour Declaration. So this is the salvation and the deliverance of the Lord's people. And that mercy starts with being gathered by the word, waking up to the truth, and then repenting or returning unto him in spirit and in truth. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekonkadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yeshua and the Bad Babal. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatham.